Hi everyone, Jacob Howard here, and welcome to this video where we are going to talk about batteries for your drones. Choosing the correct battery and caring for them will be a big part of keeping your battery investment and yourself safe. In this section, we will discuss what drone batteries are made of, why they work, and how to choose one for your needs. A battery consists of one or more cells. A cell is simply a package or container that houses the conductors, chemicals, and insulators that make up the battery. Almost all of us use batteries in our day-to-day -day lives, from our cell phones to car batteries to the ones we use in a TV remote. Each one of these was designed for a specific use and contained different battery chemistries like lead acid, alkaline, and lithium ion. The most common battery chemistry used in drones is called lithium polymer, or LiPo for short. LiPo batteries have a high energy density and high discharge rate, meaning for their weight and size, they can store a high amount of energy and deliver a lot of power. This is what makes them so popular in the droning world. Now, there are some specific terms and values that are important to learn about LiPo batteries that will help you understand how and why we use them. Voltage and capacity. Voltage is a measurement of potential energy between two points, in this case being the positive and negative terminals on a battery. A standard fully charged AA battery has 1.5 volts. On the other hand, a fully charged LiPo cell has 4.2 volts. When you put multiple cells in a chain or series, you increase the overall voltage. Cell count, or S for short, is the number of cells that are in a battery pack. It determines what voltage a battery pack will be. A 1S battery will consist of only one LiPo cell and at full charge have a voltage of 4.2 volts. A 4S battery will have four cells and at full charge a voltage of 16.8 volts, and so on and so forth. Battery capacity is a measurement of the charge stored in a battery. This charge is measured in amp hours, but in drone terms, we usually use the smaller form of amp hours, milliamp hours, or MAH for short. A MAH is equal to a thousandth of an amp hour, and an amp hour is the current of one amp flowing for one hour. So if you have a 1 amp hour or 1000 mAh battery with a 1 amp load, the battery will last for one hour. In the case of charging a battery, a LiPo cell with a capacity of 1000 mAh or 1 amp hour can store only that much at full charge. C rating. LiPo batteries also have something called a C rating. This is a rating of how much current or power the battery is capable of delivering at any given time. It's important to consider C rating when selecting a battery for your drone and flying style. If you're planning on racing where you will be using 75 to 100% throttle for most of the time, you will need a battery with a high C rating that is capable of a continuous high amp draw. If you're going to be flying in a more casual manner, you can safely use a battery with a slightly lower C rating. You also must keep in mind that C rating and capacity go hand in hand. For example, a 1500 mAh 100C battery will be able to supply more current than a 1300 mAh 100C battery. A battery with a C rating of 100C is capable of delivering 100 times the MAH rating of the battery. So if you have a 100C rating and a 1300 mAh battery, you take the product of those two numbers, 100 times 1300, and it equals 130,000 mAh or 130 amps. Here's a real life example. I fly my drone at around 20 to 28 amp continuous draw, and occasionally on flips, tricks, or full throttle punch outs, the drone will drop to 100 or 120 amps. So I need a battery that can deliver 120 or more amps. In that case, I would need to fly a 1200 mAh 100C battery at minimum because it can deliver the amps I need. If your drone is trying to pull 100 amps, but your battery is only capable of delivering 95 amps, it can cause damage to the battery. It may puff, such as slightly inflating the cells, overheat, or cause a lipo fire. Fortunately, most drone batteries on the market already have a high C rating. Voltage. Owning a LiPo battery is kind of like being Spider-Man. With great power comes great responsibility. To help prolong the life of your battery and get the best performance out of them, you need to know what your battery limits are. LiPo voltage needs to be monitored and kept within a certain range. Any good LiPo charger you get will have an automatic cutoff when the cell reaches 4.2 volts. Unless your battery is specifically designed for high voltage, overcharging your battery can cause damage to the cells or even cause a fire. On the other hand, if you discharge the cells below 3.3 volts, it can also cause damage or reduce the life of the battery pack. For this reason, we use voltage monitors and beepers on our drones that will help us know when to land when the battery is getting low. Storing a fully charged pack for more than a few days can cause the battery chemicals to start to break down and outgas. This will cause the battery to have an inflated look or puff. That is why if you are not planning on flying your fully charged batteries, it's wise to put them into a storage state. This means you use your smart charger and discharge them to 3.7 volts per cell. At that voltage state, the battery chemistry is the most stable and the battery can be safely stored for long periods of time. Keeping all this in mind, you must treat your batteries with 
with respect, as an abused battery can be very dangerous. LiPo batteries are an interesting topic when it comes to FPV drones. In today's world, we are used to everything being powered, and all we do is charge it, and we are good to go. LiPo batteries are not like that. I cannot emphasize enough how important battery safety is. If you enjoyed this video on FPV, we actually have an entire online course developed around these same types of lessons. We're talking dozens of lessons and hours of material designed to get you started into FPV or make you a better pilot. It is the world's first online FPV course, and we have students from around the world learning through it. The link to learn more is in the comments below. And as always, if you guys have any questions, definitely let me know and have fun flying.